Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. Just a quick video before the gym when I'm going to earn my reward. 10 seconds. Wasn't long, was it? What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about what it takes to be a good doctor. A good TRT doctor. Not clinician, not advanced clinical practitioner, doctor. I qualified back in 1997. Yes, before some of you were even born. A little twinkle in your dad's eyes. No, I've been a doctor for a long time. I've practiced evidence-based medicine. I worked within the NHS for 20 plus years. I then decided I can't keep doing this. I can't keep being a cog in a broken machine. I can't be pulled both ways. I have to act in the best interests of my patients. I have to be able to go to sleep and go, I've done a good job. Prior to becoming a TRT doctor, I was a GP because I got disillusioned with surgery. I was treating the condition, not the person. So I wanted to adopt a more holistic approach to patient care. So GP land, yes, cradle to grave. Wonderful, finally, I found my place. <sighs> no, disappointingly not. It became a tick box exercise. It became a awful experience. I was essentially cream crackered at the end of the day, not knowing if I'd positively affected the person sat in front of me because in 10 minutes, how can you do a good job? Tell me your symptoms quickly, quickly, quickly. Qu examination, quickly, quickly. Here, here are the options. Boom, 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 boom. No, okay, listen. I have an hour and a half for my new patient TRT consultations. That way we can listen to your story, go through everything safely and effectively and commence you on TRT then and there. So you walk away feeling hopefully reassured. Somebody has finally listened to you, taken your concerns seriously and acted in your best interests. And that's one of the things, isn't it? Your doctor should act in your best interests. And in GP land, it's almost impossible to act in your best interests in the space of 10 minutes. You are essentially firefighting. What do you want? What can I do for you? Bing, bang, bosh. That didn't sit very well. So here I am, TRT land, a fickle land where people change opinions, change clinics, and what do we do? We stand up and we are counted and we are true. We are authentic and you can't fake authenticity. So from day one, if you trawl back to the very first videos, the premise behind TRT is to mimic physiology for long-term physical and psychological health. We have never advocated or supported or allowed super physiological doses of testosterone which can cause harm because it isn't all about the feels it's all about normalization for you to go and earn your reward four minutes that's twice in four minutes dexter's up again so yes at first because obviously coming from the nhs i understood that we practice evidence-based medicine we should adhere to the safety of the BSSM, we should adhere to the manufacturer guidelines, Nabido every 12 weeks, Testo gel. Okay, testosterone gel is unbound. It rubs the lotion on its skin or it gets low testosterone again. It doesn't make any sense. The half-life of testosterone is short. So if the testosterone is unbound, it will be metabolized too quickly and you won't be able to achieve stable levels for long-term health and well-being. Nabido, a thousand milligrams injected in one bolus dose. That has an ester, 
a long ester, which means it's slowly metabolized. But to believe that you're going to have a stable testosterone level for 12 weeks is absurd. Because obviously the way that pharmacokinetics work, there is a peak and a trough. And if it takes five half-lives to achieve stability, you're going to be waiting months just to see if you can attain healthy levels. And then what are you going to do? Yeah, you're going to have to adjust the dose and wait months. What are you going to do with side effects? Because it's a long-acting ester. It doesn't make any sense, does it? So we did trial that out, believing that obviously we were acting in the best interests of our patients. But ultimately, when we were testing levels in a trough, unfortunately, they were pretty much down to where they were pre-treatment. So people felt good, then they felt worse. And what is it? Do no harm. So then we moved to more of an American model. The short acting esters, ananthate and cypionate, and intervals shorter than the advised manufacturer recommendations. So twice weekly, we had better success, but still there were some patients that did not feel good. And why was that? Well, it's because primarily SHBG, this glycoprotein that gets produced by the liver was not allowing for stable levels. If you have a low SHBG, again, the testosterone has nothing to bind to once the ester has been cleaved from the suspension and you, again, have a trough. So we don't want that. So we look to microdosing. Microdosing TRT is the future of testosterone replacement therapy. Daily injections, because what happens naturally? Yes, your body day, night, day, night, day, night. Your anabolic process is predominant at nighttime. Your catabolic process is predominant in the daytime. You are recovering from the day to prepare for the next day. Day, night, day, night, day, night. So you will achieve stable levels and you will mimic as close as damn it natural physiology by the very fact you're injecting in the morning means you're going to get a peak of testosterone, which means stable, peak trough, peak trough, peak trough, peak trough. So, it is quite simple. We obviously added in HCG because testosterone monotherapy suppresses the hypothalamus and pituitary from producing LH and FSH. Dexter wants a little cuddle. Uh, and the, so, so the uh, HCG mimics luteinizing hormone, helping to preserve testicular size and function and also the neuroendocrine system in the brain. So we like to think of TRT as hormone replacement therapy not just testosterone replacement therapy. And again, do no harm. Act in the best interest of your patient. Ay, ay, ay. The evolution of testosterone replacement therapy. We are 100% authentic. If there was a better way of doing it, we would do it that way. We are constantly looking to enhance, optimize, refine, we are constantly looking to improve our service, but the fundamental starting point will always be test SIP or an anthate if you're lucky enough to get your testosterone prescribed by the NHS and HCG. We will then titrate your dose according to effect and then adjust things accordingly because we want the best for you. We will tell you what you need to hear, not what you wanna hear. We will tell you that effort equals reward and you must trust the journey because we're not just seeking a drug effect, we're seeking a true effect to optimize physiology for long-term physical and psychological well-being. To allow you to do what? Yeah, you guessed it. Go earn your reward.